I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Starts. Hey, team, is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got the tier 10 Atelier Rigolo. I hope I pronounced that right. Review. But before we begin, if you guys like the channel and see what we're doing here as uh, value to you, like, subscribe, bell, button below. Appreciate all the subscribers to the channel and the support at 2,000 subs. We're going to do a free premium DD giveaway. So let's get right to it. The tier 10 Atelier Rigolo. I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, let's little read a little bit uh, about this ship. The Capitini Romani class was designed as a response to the French Mogador class destroyers. The Italian shipbuilders returned to the idea of minimum protection and maximum speed. The estimated speed of the ships was 40 knots, which was faster than the French leader's speed. The Taylor Regola was torpedoed by the British submarine HMS Unruffled in November 1942 and was under repair for several months. In September 1943, the ship surrendered to the Allies. After the war, Italy Rigola was transferred to the Fran to France under reparations and renamed Chateau Nord. So let's talk about the Italy Rigola. If I had to sum it up, it's basically like you just heard, the Mogador style class ship. It's like a Marceau with sap guns, crawling smoke, speed, and very uh, low detectable torpedoes. So that's pretty much a gist of it. Uh, let's read a couple of uh, other pros and cons about it. Pros, large health pool. I mean, you can notice on the bottom left of the there, the health pool is 30,000, 30,300. I mean, that is redonkulous right there for a destroyer. So pretty heavily armored there or uh, heavily health pulled. Sap shells with high alpha damage per minute if you build for it. Long range torpedoes, low detection, high speed, and access to the uh, exhaust smoke generator or engine boost power. The other cons about the um, the, pro the ship is it's pretty large, easy to hit, very short main battery range. That's why you got to build for longer range with waste, maybe a captain skill or mod, mod 1 or mod 6, that is. Slow turret traverse speed, low torpedo damage, with, and it's got a very, very high concealment. Very, not very good concealment. Again, it's like the Clabera Marceau. And, of course, you can't escape a crawling smoke screen. So if you pop your smoke, you can't get out of it unless... It goes out, or you get radar. So there's nothing more you can do. If no one's spotting for you, you are S O L. So let's talk about it. And you can see I got two gameplay videos here. This is the first one, and I've noticed uh, I really like it. I was very surprised and I enjoyed a lot of what it can do and the capabilities of it. The biggest thing is the speed. The speed is something I like in a destroyer. I mean, if you you can literally get to a cap, start it, or outrun a, a, a destroyer. It's really, really enjoyable, and especially in those game, the clinching uh, moments where you have to get somewhere really fast, it's really awesome. Now look at these sap shells right here. You can see some of the kind of things you can do to a battleship or even a cruiser. Uh, very, very nasty. Look at that, 3,000 damage for one salvo on against a battleship. Very, very mean and nasty, something I like. Uh, well, let's, before we begin... Uh, more of the review. Uh, notice that I abandoned Charlie Cap. So you notice I started the Charlie Cap first. And why did I abandon it? Because I noticed that nobody was going with me. I mean, you don't want to run to your death. So I made it a command decision and said, hey, I'm going to actually go where my, my friendly units can be there to support me as well as take fire and damage. And I'm not going to run to my death to Charlie by myself. Notice that nobody's still up there. If I had gone up there by myself, I would have been singled out either radar, tarp, whatever, I would have died. So I went to Bravo Cap support to kind of alleviate that uh, responsibility, but also have better support and support my other destroyer player. I even told my other DD, hey, come with me. It's not worth dying over there. Nobody's coming with us. So here we go. Notice, look at the damage. 4,600. Oh, 2,000. That's about 6,000 damage on one salvo right there. Pretty ridiculous of what this thing can do against a battleship. Imagine if you have a little destroyer doing about 5 to 6k off of your ship and look here's that crawling smoke I was telling you about the exhaust smoke generator it lasts a fairly decent amount of time about half the time of vampire but longer than some other uh, ships out there but about 40 to 50 seconds is pretty good the torpedoes reload pretty quick I just launched a spread right there you see they reload in about 120 seconds ish 125 seconds about 90 seconds I didn't build for the torpedoes because really the bread and butter of this ship is the guns uh, really you're doing way way more alpha damage way more damage per minute just with these guns alone and notice how he's angled against us so we do have he if we need to but i was just kind of testing out to see what can we do with an angle target and as you can see sap shells don't really care much about angles i mean it's roughly about 70 to 80 degrees of ricochet angle to make this ineffective so very very good uh guns so let's check it out the church reverse is slow so i did build for it in the captain's build it to have a little faster traverse speed uh, again at the very end of the video uh of the gameplay you or at the end of this review you're going to see the build that i did for this uh, it's not a 21 point commander build but for a 17 you can do pretty much the majority of what you really need and as you can see look he, we're still doing damage to this guy even though we're he's angled i'm just trying to see if i can hit the superstructure and you're still getting 1800 damage i mean it's fairly powerful you're not getting that fire damage now here we go we got a Yu Yang, 
that is not a smart move to go one on one with this thing because Yo Yang's only got about 8,500. Look at that. We just took off 4K just with one salvo. I mean, this thing is a beast, and look what he did to us. Really scratched the paint. Not much. So, this thing is like the Club Air. Mogador, Marceau, kind of uh, kind of DD with the sap guns. Now, who cool thing that wasn't real torpedoes. Otherwise, we'd have taken some massive damage there. Turning and uh, maneuverability is kind of sluggish, but again, the reason why is because this is a fairly large destroyer. And as you can see, because we have all that health, that's why it's so large. It's easy to hit, but man, is it difficult to turn as well. Notice we're already firing another spread right there. Very, very good. I found that these torpedoes are slow, but they are low detectability, so it's really, really good. They're very unsuspecting. I'm going to take a look at the what is the reload uh, or detectability of the torpedoes. Yep, it's a uh, see here 6.6 .6 second reaction time. Detectability is out one kilometer. So not the best, not the fastest, but a little bit okay. It's not as bad as some of those Shimikaze torpedoes. Okay, here we go. Open uh, water Yo Yang. We're going to go open water gunbow action right now. If he continues to be spotted by our buddy here, if we can look at look at this uh, the kind of the alpha damage we have. See, there's the HE shells. Not as much damage, but take a look at these sap shells. Let's see what it can do. Well, of course, this is gonna, this one's going to obliterate him. There you go. First one splash. One he goes down. We already have fifty thousand damage at thirteen minutes left in the game. And again, this thing, I'm, I'm enjoying it. AA is no, of course AA is trash. My disclaimer right there. But AA it does seem pretty unique uh it's 3.7 kilometer range as you can see on the the, the um my radar minimap 3.7 longer but the range for the medium is 145 154 dps per second at 3.7 the short range is two kilometers at 63 but for some reason i've noticed that i've been able to shoot a lot of planes down when they're right over me pretty effectively with this thing i mean it, it's a very short range but man does this thing can knock out a lot of planes uh close in but again i don't care about that because why aa is trash in this game cvs are going to get through no matter what um, I just haven't had a serious game where I'm actually getting destroyed in. All right, notice the enemy team has taken over Charlie, but it doesn't matter. Not really. We got Alpha Bravo with the submarine at Alpha, and we are going to push. And uh, I've, I've elected to push because why? I looked up at the top of the uh, screen there. I noticed half the enemy team is dead. You know what? And the te their team is split up in disarray. You know what? Why not? Let's just go at it and just play around with the ship, see what it can do. Going one-on-one -on -one with the Iowa class right here. Now, not the smartest move, but I'm just trying to test out what kind of DPM firepower. I know a Marceau could easily melt this Iowa. Let's see if a Regalo can actually do the same thing. I'm trying out the HE shells, start a fire. Now, let's see. Let's try the SAP shells. Look at the AA guns. They shot down six planes. Yeah, AA, the SAP shells are doing a little bit better. Again, you got to build for this if you want to get out to 11.5 range. I think you start base. Um, the base starting of the SAP guns, is, or I'm sorry, the main battery is 9.6 kilometers. Not very great range. So you're going to have to build for range if you want to do what I'm doing here and get out and reach some touch on it. Now, my recommendation, if I did want to build a destroyer purely for the SAP guns, I would pick the Four Sherman. Honestly, the Four Sherman is OP overpowered for SAP because it's firing at literally one and a half second reloads. Compared to this, I mean, you got a good alpha damage here, but the Four Sherman just has way, way, way too much better uh, uh, fire dam or, sorry, uh, fire rate. And there's Splash 2. Another one goes down. A Marceau, actually, funny enough, goes down, and then we take it out, and we're going to go ahead and focus on the Iowa again. Now, here we're getting attacked by the CV again. It almost seems like we're just being focused here. Notice that the speed really comes in handy. Again, the, the speed boost is active right now. Not very long. It's only about 20-ish seconds. So usually you would probably use this when you pop the smoke and do the whole uh, Pamilio, um, whatever that shit. What is that thing? You guys let me know in the comments. The one that does the YOLOs. I forgot. I think it was Pamilio Malio or something like that. That just basically does the crawling smoke, speed boosts in, and just corpse uh, ships in the background unsuspectingly. So... Uh, that one is a basically a cruise missile. This thing, you could do the same thing if you wanted to. Unfortunately, I don't think it's fast enough or uh, long enough engine boost or smoke detection to do what you want to do. The Palio Milio does a little bit better job at it. Um, I don't know if it's worth the uh, research bureau or whatever it is, or steel or research bureau. Something for really ridiculous resources. Uh, but right now, I'm just chasing down the Iowa, and he takes a nice shot. And look, we're a big target. It seems like he's having fun doing target practice because uh, we are getting hit a lot. It's really difficult to juke in this thing. Um, because of the fairly large size and everything, it's just difficult, and the guns aren't as strong. And look, we're in our smoke, and we got hit by the, the CV. I hate CVs. a cancer. And because of that, I don't like CVs. I'm going to show you a clip of what a ridiculous, how ridiculous a CV player is playing this thing. 
Yeah, but these guys are running. The game's pretty much over. That's why I push. Look at that. Look at look at this shot right here. I mean, this is pretty much a meme right here. This is how CD players play. Yeah, whatever. So just hugging the borderline right there. A line going straight through the hole. whoop de doo uh, anyways, that's how the game ended. We did our uh, job, and you notice that uh, in the, sc uh, the uh, team score at the very end of the video, you're going to notice that uh, our push was actually effective because guess what? We are uh, we're going to be number one in the team. But it, the that's the first game. That was my first game in it, the uh, Atelier Regalo, and 113,000 damage, two kills, uh, a couple fires. Look at that, number one in the team. We did our job. We, we literally just pushed the entire enemy team to the back of their uh, spawn. And uh, we were very, very effective. Notice we did about 19,000 damage of AA damage. So it's there. It's there. It's doing something. And, uh, yeah, we didn't make money on that. I can't believe we won the game. We're number one on the team. I lost money. I'm going to talk about that later. Some, there, we got to do a video about the money issue in here. I think it's inflation or whatever it is. Wargaming is just trying to milk you for all the credits as well and uh, almost forcing you to not use flags. So that'll be another video. We'll talk about it later. But, anyways, here's the second video in the second game of the Atelier Regalo. See how good we can get it here. Notice we have a submarine in the game. If you haven't seen, I've already done a video about why submarines are killing game, but uh, what more can I do other than uh, just uh, be constructive criticism about it and be negative about it. Going against a Kleber, another very, very dangerous ship. Uh, let's see what we can do. Alpha damage, right? If we go mano a mano, what can we do against the uh, Kleber? And he's got the speed boost. We pop our smoke here. Here's our advantage here. So if we pop our crawling smoke, he can't see us, but we can see him if someone's spotting for us. And then he can't heal either, just like us. So we're going to see if we can knock out any as or as much damage as we can or health off of him. Because that'll play a very huge role in the later half of the game. And that's what we want to do. Get as much damage as we can off this guy. So make it easier for us to kill him later on. Notice there's a submarine on our flank as well. So two submarines here. They're duking it out against each other uh, on the western side. It's going to hold off an entire push. Look, look, I've already got my San Martin running back. The two battleships are still in the back. Colbert is actually, funny Concept enough, actually pushing the up. The most warship. squishiest cruiser in the game is actually pushing. And there's my submarine. So, uh, I, I digress. But anyways, because this is the case, all we can do is just kind of linger and hold the front front half of the uh, advance here and see if we can knock out one ship at least. So let's see if we can take the Bayard out, which is not really a fair match. This is a tier 8, but, I mean, he's got some powerful guns. Let's see if we can take uh, the sap shells and fire and eliminate as many uh, of his, or eliminate uh, one ship at least, or take as much health as we can. Look at the firing angles. Firing angles are pretty decent. Look at those hits right there. Thank goodness someone citadel on them, and I think we can take them out. Look at this. One shot right there takes him out. 30, about 3,300 uh, damage right off that guy, and he is off the map. Slash one for us just in the first three minutes of the game and now we're running away because everybody and their mother is shooting us because we're the only guy spotted and you wonder why because everybody is in the back i don't know why i always get the teams that like to stay in the back because the enemy team loves pushing up for some reason I, I don't get that but luck of the draw i guess gk so let's see if uh, gk is pushing in solo and i'm actually impr i applaud this gk player way to go you're actually playing the game by moving up and using your health, your 100,000 health right there, and actually using it to fight. So kudos on you. I love it. Look at our smoke generator. lasts about 48 plus seconds, so you can see what you can build for that there. Now, smart move, GK, goes undetected because why? Nobody's spotting them. Now, I'm the only one spotting, and because I'm getting shot at, I have to use my smoke, but because I did that, no one's spotting the rest of the enemy team. So pretty sad right there when you're the only guy spotting and doing all the work. I told you, the DD player, destroyer player, is literally the key component of winning a game. And I've started to notice that more and more games are less destroyer players. I think the MM is just, the matchmaking is just going bonkers and putting more destroy, uh, more submarines and more carriers because the submarine and carriers they take up spots i notice majority of games are two submarines and maybe a carrier so that's three spots that could have been destroyer players and notice there's not many destroyer players anymore i mean you only got one or two and i'm a channel and a youtuber that's literally trying to encourage people to play more destroyers we need more destroyer players we need that because that is a key component of the game that does all everything stations. i mean otherwise why would wargaming build these cap target. points and all you know stations. capture the flag or capture points or destroy uh destroy submarines or destroy other destroyers because you need destroyer players so pretty much that's my real spiel on that gk is running away now because why guess what he's being chased by a submarine i i feel feel for you gk i don't approve of this style of gameplay where one player has a complete dominance over the other and just by chasing you and actually can torp you at will and there's nothing you can do about it i'm sorry um so let's see if we can do something about it like 
let's see if we can do our normal destroyer roll by pushing up in a cap and pushing and trying to capture it push the enemy team out of their spawn and try to uh, destroy the other destroyer for like the club air uh, let's see let's talk about some of the pros that they talked about earlier the um, the overall idea of this uh, ship is pretty much a fast gunboat that has crawling smoke with the sap guns now the cool thing about this is they would have almost made this overpowered had they given a fast reload on this thing but this thing is like a marceau with the four turrets there and four double barrel turrets is insane especially if you ever play a marceau you guys see how fast and ridiculous that hits because still got the highest dpm in the game if they had made the tilly regalo the same rate it, it would have been superly overpowered but um yeah four turrets is pretty pretty ridiculous and pretty strong in the game world worship for destroyers you need four turrets to survive in anything in this thing all right, we say we're uh, limiting the Colbert here. We're going to get a nice juicy hit right there. Look at that. 4,500 damage total right there with those guns. I mean, this thing is really It made him actually turn away. So if you know if you can make a Colbert turn away, you know you got a pretty uh, strong ship right here. Again, this is not every situation. I'm going to say I have died a lot um, now I've uh, having played this ship a little bit more. It's pretty situational. You just got to be very careful, just like in any destroyer. You just got to be careful of radar, be careful of other submarines, and, of course, be careful of other high DPM gunboats. Checking out the torpedoes here. Again, the range of the torpedoes is out to 13 half. So you get longer range torpedoes than the guns. So it seems like these torpedoes are uh, for a longer range effectiveness than the actual uh, gun turrets themselves. Again, the build I have uh, right now is not built for any kind of effective reload um, on the captain build. Um, I, I, according to the game, it says it's not recommended because why? Your reload is so horrendously long anyways. Shaving off a second or two is not really going to make much of a difference. Uh, I think they said more focus more on the smoke at the because you get six of them, you get the engine boost, and of course you also uh, you have you need range anyways. If you want uh, the guns to be any kind of effective, you you don't want to have a 9.6 base. You want to have at least this thing reach out to 11 and a half, maybe 13, and get that kind of long. I might try that. I might actually try building for a, a longer range gunboat build, but um, I don't know. We'll we'll take a look at it and see. But honestly, the 11 and a half range is pretty decent for what you need to do, especially if you can pop the smoke um, at will. Uh, the only guys that you really affect you are the uh, Soviet cruisers that have a radar out to 12, which will spot you no matter what. And I have been caught, uh, having played this thing a couple times, being caught in that radar range. So let's take a look at what this sap. This is a really annoying for a GK where we're shaving off 1,500 or 3,000 damage every salvo here. It's pretty uh, horrendous. I mean, he's at 25,000. Just notice how much damage we can really take off this thing. Notice we're getting hit pretty hard. We are a large target. Pretty easy for the secondary gunners to hit. We get a nice torpedo spread out there. But I don't think it's going to matter because our, I mean, our DPM is actually pretty darn effective. Let's see what we got. 2,000 damage here. What else can we get? Oh, finally, GK takes down the submarine. I applaud you. Uh, even though he's on my team, I don't like subs. And let's see here. Let's see, we got 1,000. What can we do to this guy? Yeah, we're not getting very good dispersion. I mean, I don't, I'm just trying to figure out the angles on this thing or how to aim this thing. Uh, we got 3,000 damage there. Let's see if we can get another one. He's down to 6,000. He popped our smoke. He took a shot at us, actually. And boom, he goes down. Splash 2. There it is. He goes down. That's two for kills for the count. 62,000 damage, 11 minutes left in the game. And you can see the power of what the Regalo can do right there. No help from the rest of my team right there. I mean, he, they weren't, obviously, they weren't drawing fire. Uh, they noticed GK tight, tried to take a swipe at me anyways, even though I was in smoke. Apparently, I'm a bigger threat. And again, that is another tip for destroyer players. You want to be a bigger threat than even the battleship and cruiser. That's why you're going to be prime target on the menu because you are the deadliest thing out there. As despite there being a submarine in the game. Unfortunately, our submarine is dead, but whatever. I don't like submarines anyways. I think the true role of uh, the game, or a true role that actually shines the most is the destroyer player, and uh, that's why I'm trying to advocate it more. Let's see if we can uh, head in into the cap and try to cap it for our team. Uh, Kelbear's running away, and again, here's another role that we're supposed to do. We're either supposed to torp this Yamato on the left here because we're the torpedo boats, right? Or we're supposed to hunt down this Kelbear and uh, prevent it from killing the rest of our battleships and cruisers. Don't know why Montana, Montana is running away from a Kelbear. Think about that for a second. You're literally a battleship running away from a destroyer. He's almost dead. 5,000 he's shooting out. I don't know why you're running away. Uh, push. I mean, that's all I can say. You're bigger, you got more health, push. St. Martin should also be pushing with me, supporting the DD roll, because you got radar. Well, I don't know why you're running or not doing much and turning away. Well, look, I'm, I'm opening up here. I'm going to open up and see if I can eliminate the club air. Look at the range, a decent range, 11.5. Ooh, and this salvo should eliminate him right here. And 
Boom. Splashed it. Three. Oh, and he's the bounty hunter. We get a little bonus of... I think the bounty hunter events la is over right now. It only lasted for a few days. But basically, if you designate yourself as a bounty, you get a target symbol over your ship. You kill your... If you kill that person with that target symbol, you get these little tokens or whatever, so you can buy things in the army. whoop de do. All right, so uh, three kills. Torpedo I think that's board. the end of the game. I don't think there's any more kills that I could show off right here uh, other than I'll just cap the point and use my speed to kind of uh, outspot everybody else and, of course, rush in and cap everybody. Again, I'm the last destroyer. I mean, I'm not, again, rule key rule for destroyers, don't die. You're supposed to last to the very, very end of the game because if you don't, look what happens to the other team. They all they have is a submarine, which is kind of like a destroyer, but the, the team with the most destroyers that survive the end of the, the match usually tim typically win. So not to say that happens every time. I've seen people throw the game. but So what, let's sum it up. What, what do I like about the uh, Tilly Rigello? It, it is fast. That's the thing I like about it. Look at the speed, right? We're going 41 knots. Engine boost takes it up to about 49, 50. I mean, really, really quick. The Crawling Smoke is a awesome get-out-of-jail-free card. You get spotted, boom, pop it, you're gone. Last 40-something seconds, very good. Torpedoes are awesome. I have gotten a lot of a couple torpedo kills with this thing. Uh, it's just uh, hit or miss, but they are, I mean, decent concealment. They do come out of nowhere, and they got decent range, 13.5. So, I mean, that's as good as I could ask for for a uh, torpedo. The HE is okay. It's just like standard HE, but the, it's the, the shining bread and butter of this thing is the SAP uh, main guns. Uh, maneuverability is wonky. It's just terrible because it's huge. It turns like a truck, but, man, the health does make up for 30,300 health. Uh, for if you build for it, really, really awesome. I do like that. So, what would I give this thing? Would I give it a recommendation? Actually, I would say yes. I would recommend those that like playing destroyers to actually try the ship out. Um, it, it does require a little bit of uh, a training or a learning curve because it doesn't act like most traditional destroyers where you're supposed to so stop, smoke, and stay in your smoke and spam from smoke. Um, not the best, I would say, uh, destroyed hunter because of the concealment 7.8, but this thing is like a Clubera Marceau playstyle. So if you do like Clubera Marceau Mogador kind of playstyle, this is the ship for you. I think it's really, really good in that regard. Very recommended. If you're more of that, you know, sit, spam, and uh, tank, um, maybe not. It's not designed for that. You're supposed to utilize your speed to your advantage, shoot a lot, fire a lot, and get uh, a lot of the players out of the match with that high DPM of sap. So. Uh, look at that three kills not the greatest on the money wise yeah top three I mean again this thing will definitely put you in the top leaderboards because of the amount of firepower and damage you can produce and again losing uh, winning the match and still losing money 92,000 credits lost oh my gosh there's they got to fix something about the credit system but anyways hope you guys like the video if you see value like subscribe bell button below and until next time you guys stay safe cheers